Hey y'all, it's Sharon and I'm back to share another policing experience with you guys. If you're new to the channel, I'm a retired detective. I worked for 20 years for a southeastern city in the US and I was also in the military. I'm sharing my perspectives and my experiences in hopes of helping uh, folks in similar situations or just providing a different way of looking at things. And with that being said, uh, I asked myself, while I was policing, did it abate fear in the community or did it enhance it? And I took a step back and I looked at my personal life and I thought about the people I was around and did I create fear or um, did, I, did I enhance the environment for them, if you will. And we talked about influence a couple of videos back. And remember, I said that uh, you can't control if you influence only how and that's so true because a lot of people think they could just slide into a room and nobody notices but your the atmosphere or the environment or the room does shift believe it or not you could walk in and say absolutely nothing but your influence is created by just entering and shifting around the cosmos if you will so i started to think about wearing a uniform and did i create fear or did i enhance the experience of working for the community. And I have to say, when I put the uniform on, it made me think about what did it magnify within me when I put the uniform on, the badge, the gun, uh, the, the uniform. And I have to admit, when I put the uniform on, I noticed, you know, doing the self-check, kind of like, well, let me say this, with money. Money, when you have a lot of it, will enhance whoever you are. Whatever and whoever you are on the inside is going to be enhanced. And for me, um, having a lot of money at one time, I noticed how impulsive I can be. So impulsive to the point where I get, it's detriment to myself. Meaning, let's say I, I had a million dollars in one day. I know I'm gonna try to help folks, I'm gonna give money away, and uh, not even think about tomorrow. Well, that's how it used to be. And so I noticed if I get a lot of money at one time, I'm very impulsive. And of course, the self-check, I had to regulate that and uh, figure some things out. And I noticed with the uniform, when I put the uniform on, I noticed that I had a, a, a lot of pride, excessive pride. And an example would be, I would we'd hit these warrants and go into the houses and a lot of the houses, there would be so much garbage, what I thought was garbage, clothes over here, um, empty empty restaurant containers on the table, dishes not washed in the sink. And I'm like, how could these people live like this? And so I noticed that when I put on the uniform, I was being very judgmental. And uh, I noticed in our training, it, it it's conducive to being judgmental, this us versus them. And so, I noticed that when I put on the uniform and then I had the question, did I bring fear to the community or did I, did I abate the fear? And I have to say, when I think about it, the guys that were doing the criminal stuff, yeah, they were afraid, but did it spill over onto the regular folks? And I have to admit, yes, because remember we talked about this in some earlier videos. I belong to a team is six to seven, six to eight of us on a team. And we're working this four by five mile square area. And then there are other units, six to eight people coming into the same area because one, we're trying to keep the sergeants off our back. And two, we're trying to prove that we're working. And the easiest place to go get the bodies, if you will, is to go to these poor areas. You'll find somebody walking in the street or, or drinking in public, smoking crack, uh, all kind of different things. And that's where you go to get the bodies, to keep the sergeants off of you and to prove that I'm working, to keep it simple. And so I thought about that and I said, so what kind of fear are we instilling on the community if, if five or six different units are coming to the same area to find the body? And I used to talk to the folks out there and they tell you, a lot of good kids out there and they'll sit there and say, I hate going to the store because the officers are always, you know, bother me. Somebody gonna stop me. I can't even drive to the, to the whatever, whatever, because I'm getting pulled over. I felt them on that and I knew it was true. 
And it was true because we're saturating that area and going to that area to find the bodies. So if all of this fear is on the community, I thought again, I said to myself, what if we could put a dollar amount on the fear? Well, how much would that look like? So I started researching and the, the funny thing that I found, it's not funny, the crazy thing that I found was nobody really asked the question, police misconduct and how much the cities pay out each year. We always talk, we always hear about the police budgets and how much they need this and these big, huge budgets. But how much does the city pay out each year? And I looked it up in my city, averages about a million dollars a year. I think this year they're gonna pay a little bit more than that. Because there was one lawsuit that was just settled in May from 2016, I think it was. But my city pays out on average a million dollars on police misconduct, not not the the regular complaint and somebody misconduct. It was proven that this officer committed some kind of wrong act or abuse and now the city's paying on it or they don't want to admit guilt and they're going to pay on it just to get rid of it. A million dollars a year. New York, um, oh yes, it, yeah, it was a million dollars over five year period. It averages out to be about a million dollars a year. New York, of course, more people, more police. They're averaging 1.7, well, 1.7 billion in 10 years paid out. And whose fear is that they're paying on? The police, because every one of those reports, I'm sure the officer felt threatened or felt some kind of fear. There's something wrong with that, guys. Think about that. Police misconduct, let me just take my little city, a million dollars a year. And then meanwhile, the community was saturating the areas, poor usually, getting the bodies, because we, us individual officers, we want to keep the sergeants off our back so they don't mess with our days off and all that good money we make, extra money we make, and also to prove that I'm working. And there's a fear there. And then here we are in uniform. Yes, I represent the agency, so when they do messed up bad things, I have to, I have to take that too. And as the agency, the city is paying out almost a million dollars a year because the officer feared for their lives and conducted some kind of illegal or abusive situation. There's something wrong with that, guys. There's something wrong with that. I just want to give that to you to, to think about. But yeah, I, when I put on the uniform, as a police officer, am I abating the fear or am I enhancing, am I enhancing the fear? And as a representative of the, of the city that I work for, I always thought to myself, we need to change that protect and serve. It's, it's, it's no longer useful. I say the new model should be, I'm responsible for your safety, not your demise. But yeah, I just want to give that to you to think about. And I will be back next week. Uh, like, subscribe, leave a comment if you feel like it. Uh, take a look at our online store. The link is in the description. I created some notebooks. I'm almost finished with my book, but the notebook links are in the description. They'll take you straight to Amazon. You don't have to search. And as always, guys, remember, you don't necessarily have to go through a thing to learn from it. Talk to you guys later. Bye.